ना तेरा खुदा कोई और है ना मेरा खुदा कोई और है ना तेरा खुदा कोई और है ना मेरा खुदा कोई और है ये जो रास्ते हैं जुदा जुदा ये मामला कोई और है Welcome to another series of building bridges between the faiths. Uh, on well, you know, compliments to ITV and IFRI for, and you, the viewers, for making this program uh, being the success that it is. We are getting a lot of feedback, and and we are trying to let this program not be just a talk shop between uh, you listening to me and, and, and I'm talking to you, but to be doing something physically on the ground in your area and building these bridges of understanding between one another. And, and it is happening, uh, you know, tonight's episode, and we'll probably go on to two episodes with this, is actually as a result of the feedback uh, and uh, communications that we've been getting across the board and we thank everyone for all the avid viewers out there for the emails and for the uh, SMSs as well as the letters that are coming through. We're going to be discussing over the next uh, two episodes uh, some of the uh, viewpoints uh, between Christianity and Islam uh, as received uh, by you, the viewers. Uh, you know, we did say that there's a lot of similarities, uh, especially between the uh, the last three prophets, uh, Moses, Jesus, and the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon them. Uh, and they are also the, you know, the Abrahamic prophets. We are the Abrahamic family as well. Uh, as if you look at our screen in our background, uh, on the one level, you know, this is what uh, the Building Bridges is all about. We are all the children of Adam, the tree of humanity. But also on the right, you'll see there, you know, on the left, you see nations and tribes. But on the right, you see Abraham, the branch, the Abrahamic branch. And, uh, and that therefore we say Jews, Christians, and Muslims are the Abrahamic family. So uh, uh, we've been getting uh, a lot of feedback on this. And what we're going to be covering over the next one or two episodes, we've been getting uh, letters and comments uh, talking about uh, some of the ways uh, uh, the, I have a pastor who wrote to me, one or two pastors have written to me. We'll keep them anonymous. We won't give their names. We have the letters. But uh, I think the fact that they have taken the trouble uh, to write and we're going to thank them very gracefully and in the nice way they have done that, giving their view and position on issues uh, uh, between Islam, Judaism and Christianity. And that's what it is, you know, and we welcome that in the spirit in which it is done. Remember we did say in this program, we can agree to disagree. We can have different viewpoints and everybody is allowed to have their viewpoint. You know, so long as we have the text and we have the references, uh, it's the one thing. Uh, if, if, there is a, if we all agree on the textual references, that's the first, that's a good start. Uh, and then secondly, uh, obviously there is going to be sometimes a difference of understanding of the text or a different interpretation of this text. That's where, you know, we, this program is allowing that. We are saying, uh, you know, let's discuss that. Let's, we may not agree on everything, but let's respect you know, let's allow the differences. And so we'll be talking about some of these uh, views that were sent by uh, particularly a pastor who wrote us a nice long uh, letter, uh, raising a lot of issues, giving his views on many of the issues uh, and how he sees it, and which we really appreciate that. And so, uh, uh, you know, because that is, uh, you know, how they are looking at it and how he sees it, and how probably his congregation, because he's a pastor, and he's, he's obviously explaining it and preaching it to his uh, uh, you know, congregation that way. Uh, so we, it's, and, and the fact that he wrote to us, he wants our comments on it. Uh, we have sent a, a, a reply to him, but we're also discussing it here on, uh, simply because, uh, on, the, on ITV, because 
it is obvious that many others who are viewing, you know, in the different parts of our country and in the SADC, wherever ITV is, is reaching and, you know, uh, Alhamdulillah, the ITV uh, viewership is growing as well. Uh, and, and, you know, compliments to the management of ITV. Uh, the, the listenership and the viewership is growing uh, out there and that's what it's all about. So we will discuss these issues, uh, you know, in this next two episodes, but also just for those, uh, those who are joining us for the first time, uh, let us uh, remind them the format. We will discuss those issues that we normally want to discuss the topic, but uh, towards the last, especially the last segment, <clears throat> we will then uh, discuss some of your comments and the questions that come through uh, from you, the viewers, and we will answer that as well. So, yes, as we say, you know, uh, therefore, uh, you know, this particular program, uh, we're going to be, let's see how many, we probably will take two episodes for this response to the pastor. And again, uh, we had about two or three pastors writing to us uh, when it was issues which... Uh, in a very nice way, we've been discussing them. Uh, but also, uh, what we do want to show also is that we are allowing the differences. We, you know, we are respecting the differences. Even sometimes we may not ex accept those viewpoints. But it is a, it's a, the Quran itself says, you know, there is no compulsion in faith. The truth is clear from error. And what, in, especially when you talk religion and may I add politics, there's always going to be different views. And, and that's what we're going to, uh, you know, accept. And that's what we must, ex uh, you know, uh, the, uh, we must allow that. So I think because of time, let's go straight in. One of the issues the pastor uh, raised is that the issue of, there's a verse in the Quran, as you say, in chapter 7, verse 20, it talks about the raiment or the garment, you know, the story of Adam and Eve, peace be upon them, in the Garden of Eden. It's in the Bible and it's in the Quran as well. And then, uh, you know, after they... Uh, forgot the commandments and and Satan m made them to forget uh, and then what happened they then suddenly discovered uh, you know their shame and they tried to cover themselves and that's what the verse says oh you children of Adam we have bestowed if you look at that uh, slide behind you oh you children of Adam or we have bestowed raiment, which means garment or clothes upon you to cover your shame as well as to be an adornment to you. But the raiment or the garment of righteousness, that is the best. Such are among the signs of Allah that they may receive admonition in chapter 7 verse 26. Now our pastor here is using this and what he's actually, uh, he's, he started with this verse about the garment uh, and, and, the, uh, and the clothes that God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordained for Adam and Bani Adam and the children of Adam. But what he is trying to say is that the raiment is the blood of Jesus. That is what he's saying. This raiment, this garment is the blood of Jesus. But he's quoting the Quran, chapter 3, verse 55, to say this. He's using this verse, chapter 3, verse 55, to say, and he's drawing the conclusion that that raiment is the blood of Jesus. So let's, let's read. There's the verse. He mentioned the verse, he didn't quote it in the letter to me, but I, I'm quoting the, I'm, I'm, here's the verse there. Those of you who have your Qurans, behold, Allah said, Oh Jesus, I will take you and raise you to myself and clear you of the falsehood of those who blaspheme. I will make those who follow you superior to those who reject faith to the day of resurrection. Then shall ye all return to me and I will judge between you of the matters wherein you dispute. Unquote. Chapter 3 of the Quran verse 55. Now what we are uh, discussing here is we see no correlation. This is the reference given by our pastor that he is saying according to chapter 3 verse 55 of the Quran that raiment which the Quran is talking about is the blood of Christ. But this particular verse at all is not talking about garment uh, or clothes at all. You know this is a, a conversation uh, which God Almighty in the Quran is having with Jesus, peace be upon him. And in this conversation, he's telling Jesus that, you know, I will take thee to and raise thee to my... He's talking about the end of the mission of Jesus, peace be upon him. We're all going to return to our Creator in any case. And, and I will clear you of the, those who blaspheme. In other words, there are people changed and started making stories 
uh, about and around the teachings of Jesus, peace be on them. There's the verse in front of you, uh, and, and I will make those who follow you superior to those who reject it. In other words, not all the children of Israel, uh, you know, and not all the disciples of Jesus, peace be upon him, went against his teachings. Uh, they were those who were truthful and faithful to the original teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, after he was taken up by God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what this verse is talking about till the day of resurrection. And then I will judge between you on matters where you dispute. Now, I just want to highlight this simply because uh, uh, when uh, the pastor is saying uh, that uh, this garment, which, uh, that you will use this garment to cover your shame, uh, which God speaks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in about Adam and Eve in the previous verse, he draws the conclusion basing it on chapter 3 verse 55 of the Quran which you see there on your screen to say the raiment, this garment is the blood of Jesus. Now there, there is no correlation. Uh, first of all, this, this verse that you see in the background is not talking anything about the story of Adam and Eve at all. It is talking about the end of the mission of Jesus, peace be upon him, and the fact that there were many, uh, you know, in his time and after him, who, who started blaspheming and saying things uh, to Jesus which is not attributed to him. And God said uh, that Allah SWT in that verse, that on the day of judgment, when I take you all back, the, the, the verse ends will say, and I will judge between you of the matters wherein you dispute. So, okay, that is uh, the first issue there. We started off and let's, you know, this is what this program is all about. Stay tuned and we'll be back after the break. Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, we uh, just started uh, this discussion uh, on a, a letter, a long letter, uh, uh, may I say a discussion letter on issues uh, uh, raised by our pastor, uh, who's by the way based in Johannesburg, uh, between uh, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. And, and again, I would like to thank him, although we sent a letter to him personally with the reply, this reply that you are seeing. But I thought we will share this with you because this is exactly what we want uh, uh, this program to be, an interactive program. And the first, before the break, we spoke about the issue of the garment, uh, you know. Uh, uh, what, what I think he, he did say also, maybe I'll just end this. Uh, you know, we are talking about, the Quran talks about this garment, although we must wear clothes, uh, and we must wear modest clothes. But the Quran speaks about, which the pastor raised, and he had a good point too, that the, the real garment, which even the Quran talks about, is libasu taqwa. It's the garment uh, of righteousness. We should, you know, in just this outward clothes, I could be wearing nice clothes outwardly, but my character that I'm clothing with, the character that I have is, is a bad character, is very arrogant, is very uncouth, is very unfriendly to people. So what's the sense? I'm outwardly looking good, but uh, in my character and my way with people, that garment, that dress of mine, my, my, the, the, my, character that is, I, my character is not dressed while, my character is dressed with arrogance. So uh, he mentioned that issue, bringing about uh, analogy between the, the character and, and the garment that we wear, our inner quality and our exterior. Uh, and uh, that the Quran itself in that verse, chapter 72, I think if we go back to that verse, uh, yeah, I think if we go back to the screen, uh, it is in the, if it is in that slide, you'll find in chapter 7, verse 26 of that verse, and you'll say, that the, Allah said, oh, you children of Adam, we have bestowed garment upon you to cover your shame, as well as, uh, as to be an adornment, but the raiment or garment of righteousness, that is it. Alibas to taqwa, you see, but the garment or the raiment in the middle of righteousness, that is the best. So God Almighty Allah SWT, it's nice. okay, we must wear these outward clothes, but the garment of righteousness, libas to taqwa, the, you know the word right in Arabic to translate it, righteousness is, a, is one of the meanings of it, yes, but it's actually saying, you know, to be God conscious is to be always aware of God Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and obeying His laws to be righteous, all that is linked, that is the best garment to be wearing. So I think um, the, the first issue uh, we, we, we went through now uh, is this issue. The second issue 
that was raised by uh, our pastor is that he says, Jesus, peace be upon him, supersedes the law of Moses. Peace be upon him. This is what he's saying. Now here comes the Judaic Christian uh, interaction. But he also, in his letter, says that it even supersedes the Quran. And he's basing it on chapter 5, verse 48 of the Quran. Let's read the verse. There's it on the screen. And this is God Almighty Allah SWT. In the Quran, in chapter 5, verse 40, he says, To ye, he's talking to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, we send the scripture in truth, confirming the scripture that came before it, and guarding it in safety. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed, and follow not their vain desires, diverging from the truth that has come to thee. To each among you we have prescribed a law and an open way. If Allah had so willed, we would have made you a single people. But his plan is to test you in what he has given you. So strive in a race in all virtues. The goal of all of you is to Allah. It is he that will show you the truth of the matters in which you dispute. Unquote. This is a very beautiful uh, verse of the Quran. Uh, those of you who are following our building bridges and even our early episodes, and we will mention to you about our early episodes. You know, we've got all these episodes on the ITV network, or you could contact us at IFRI we will, when we, in the last segment, we'll give you our details. And it will explain to you that how, uh, you know, this, based on this verse, that is how we also, you know, Islam encourages this uh, dialogue, uh, interfaith dialogue, building bridges between people, because it tells us, you know, if God Almighty Allah wanted to, he could have made us all one, you know, one people. But he allowed what, uh, you know, all these different uh, uh, variations and different diversions. Uh, this is part of God's plan. Uh, but what it is saying here is telling the prophet, peace be upon him, that this Quran confirms the scripture that came before it. So the Quran is not denying the, the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's not denying the book that was given to Moses, peace be upon him, and Jesus. But it ends up with saying, Al, and it is al muhaymin and it is and guarding it in safety. So it is a watcher over it. So the Quran is, so to say, the last testament. So the scripture came to you in truth, which is this Quran, confirming the scriptures that came before it. The Torah and the Injil, the Gospels, and, and the law of Moses, peace but guarding it. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed and follow not their vain desires diverging from the truth that has come to thee. To each one God has given a way and a prescribed law and an open way. So here yeah, you'll find the Quran is actually commanding the prophet peace be upon them. Even if we have to judge, uh, you know, if, because in the, if, what this is actually meaning is they came, there was a time, in the time of the prophet peace be upon them, there were Jews and Christians. In, in, in the time of the prophet, peace be upon him. And many of them actually wanted, they, because they recognized him for his character and respected him for his justice, they used to come to him for rulings, for judgments. And God Almighty Allah tell him, judge with them justly, you know, according to, if they want it according to their books or according to the Quran, but just judge justly with them. So what we are seeing here is that, uh, yes, God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa when in the time of Moses, Moses, peace be upon him, was given the law and, and, and rules and, and the revelation for that time. And then God followed after that 500 years later, Jesus, peace be upon him, came. And, and Jesus, peace be upon him, also said in Matthew, think not that I have come to destroy the law of Moses, nay, but to fulfill. Jesus clearly said this, that I have not come to destroy the law of Moses. He did not annul it, but to fulfill it. You know, so here Jesus himself talks about, uh, you know, still obeying the commandments of, of Moses, the laws of Moses, but obviously bringing, adding to the, to the commandments, God Almighty, he sent some, you know, what was relevant after 500 years later for the children of Israel. He gave new laws and what was added, uh, you know, for as the uh, society developed and things were developing in the time of Jesus, the gospel, the New Testament, added to it what was relevant. And then 500 years later came the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the world changed even more and advanced even more. And God Almighty Allah SWT then sent the Quran as the last and final testament, which is superseding and confirming the previous ones, but you know, uh, uh, bringing in uh, uh, things that are relevant for the new development, the new era. It's you know, like a motor vehicle. You know, the, you find the car companies, they have a 1950 model car, it had its manual. Then when it came to 1970, the same car, the same company, that it gave a new manual for the 1970 model. You can't now use 
the 1950 model manual for the 1970 model car because things have developed, they have advanced and discovered new things and, and you know, to, to meet the newer requirements. So like that, you know, you had the Old Testament of Moses, peace be upon him, you had the New Testament given to Jesus, peace be upon him. The Quran doesn't use those words, the Quran says the Torah, you know, of, to, of given to Moses, peace be upon him, and Muslims accept the Torah uh, that the original that was given to Moses, peace be upon him, uh, what was given to Jesus, peace be upon him, is the Injil. It's called the Injil. You can loosely translate the gospel or the good news, uh, you know, which uh, the, the Christian, some Christians translate as the New Testament. It's fine, but it is in its original language. Muslims will accept the original. Uh, uh, and then finally came the Quran, which is kept in its original, you know, as the last uh, and final testament from God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to humanity. So here it is also uh, uh, an important point to emphasize that uh, from the Muslim position, the Muslims do not believe uh, that, uh, uh, you know, uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, came and annulled the law of Moses and that uh, Jesus, peace be upon him, is now law, is the superseding. Because after him, he himself said in John, uh, remember 16, and there are many verses in the Bible. We did a whole series by the way. There'll be a lot of references because we are just taking these issues because it was sent by our pastor, uh, you know, these issues, and we have done series on this. So es especially this one on, 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 on the coming of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the relevance of the Quran to the, uh, to the Torah and the Injil and the revelations of Moses and Jesus, peace be upon him. We did a full series of this, you know, whole episodes were, were dedicated to this. And these are available past episodes for the viewers, you know, from the ITV website. Or you could contact us at IFRI for those specific uh, episodes with all the references and the discussion we had. But I think for now, we just want to highlight that, uh, you know, this is the Muslim position. Uh, and then if you let's go a little further on this issue, the Quran chapter uh, maybe we'll, we'll do this after the break, uh, you know, uh, we will show you that we will come back uh, and there's another verse in the Quran that you'll see in the back, we will go into detail. Chapter 5, verse 46 and 47, which by the way our pastor does quote and, and this is going to shed some more light from the Quran itself as what I am saying on the Muslim position of the revelations given to Moses peace be upon him, Jesus, peace be upon him, and finally, the final messenger, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We will see the relevance of this, and as Muslims, we accept, you know, we do not deny uh, the revelations that came before it. Uh, uh, so stay tuned, we'll be back after the break. <laughs> Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to the next segment. Yes, we are continuing this discussion uh, as a, in a response to the letter sent by our pastor from Johannesburg. Uh, uh, he was originally of Jewish background. He was of Jewish family and then uh, he accepted Christianity. And, uh, uh, and, and he has written to us uh, a, a, quite a few pages uh, in a very nice way discussing his view and his take on the discussions we're having on, uh, on ITV. Perhaps, you know, we will try and negotiate to bring him on air if he agrees, uh, because we like the, 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 the uh, way, you know, and the approach and, and, and uh, the good manner. Uh, in which uh, we are having this discussion and, and the way he sent it. Because everyone has the right to, to give their view and to, to propagate their view. In any case, in a, we are in a democracy in South Africa. Our democracy is working. But let's come back to, uh, to, to this discussion on the relationship between uh, the revelation, the Torah, which the Christians call the Old Testament, given to Moses, peace be upon him, the, the revelation given to Jesus, peace be upon him, called the Injil, uh, which is translated as the New Testament or regarded as the, the, the gospel uh, or the, and the good news, and then the Quran, which is the last testament. Let's go to the screen and, and let's see what the Quran says following up in chapter 5, verse 46 and 47. But I must say the pastor, these, are the, these verses that I'm putting is the verses that he quoted. So I thank him for that, which means he's, he's reading the Quran, he's going through it, and we are, that is how we are opening up this discussion. So if you look at that slide, that's on the, back, uh, on the background, 
the Quran says, and in their footsteps, uh, we sent Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming the law that had come before him. And we sent him the gospel. Therein was guidance and light and a confirmation of the law that had come before him, a guidance and an admonition to those who fear Allah. So let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah has revealed therein. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah has revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. So you find here that the Quran is telling the Prophet, peace be upon him, that it tells the Jews, and we're not rejecting the, 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 the Torah that was given to Moses, peace be upon him. Neither are we rejecting the Gospel, uh, the, the Injil that was given to Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, is commanded that if you, if you want to judge, judge them according to their books. Uh, you know, uh, and if anyone fails to judge by the light which God has revealed, they are then rebelling. So, you know, you can't uh, have it both ways. Either you obey the law uh, and you follow what is there uh, uh, or you do your own thing, right? You know how people are. This is human nature. You know, if something don't suit me, I want to look somewhere else, get another view. I'm looking for something to fit my thinking. Uh, and, and, and this happens, you know, all the time with human beings. Uh, unfortunately, uh, with God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if that's the law, you either obey the law accept the law and obey the law. Uh, you can't say I accept the law but I don't like the law and uh, I'll try and do and try and circumvent the law. Uh, you'll find one of the problems uh, you'll find in the New Testament in the, in the Gospels that Jesus, peace be upon him, was having with the Israelites, uh, the children of Israel at his time, during his time, is they were doing just that. You know, they were trying to make the law of Moses to none. They were not obeying the law. You remember, he went to the uh, marketplace. Remember the money lenders were there and he threw the tables, you know, all the money lenders. Why he did that? He's trying to tell them, you know, this is not allowed in your law. The law, you are the children of Israel. You are supposed to be following the law of Moses. Taking interest and dealing in money lending on interest is not allowed in, in, in Leviticus, in, your, in the Old Testament. Why are you still doing it? Because they were trying to, you know, circumvent the law. That is why uh, the last verse, the last line, two lines of this verse of the Quran, Allah says, if any do fail to judge by the light of what God Almighty Allah has revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. So I think when we're talking about this relationship, uh, about the, 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 the Torah, the, the, the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the Quran, the Quran is in, in, in a fear. I mean, look how beautiful the Quran is. The Quran is saying, and, it, it, and it's saying in this verse behind you, that, that when the gospel was in, therein was guidance and a light. And even the Torah, it was guidance and a light. Uh, I know there is uh, uh, the verse people say that Jesus, peace be upon him, is the truth, the light, and the way. We accept that. That in his time, uh, he was the truth and the light and the way for the Israelites. He, in the time of Moses, peace be upon him, Moses was the truth, the light, and the way, you know, for the people in his time. Because he was the prophet that was sent to the people, and therefore he was the truth, the light, and the way uh, to show the people to God because he was given the revelation wherein there is light. You know, the Quran confirms this, and we do not reject that. Uh, but in God's plan, you know, he sent prophets one after the other, and always the prophets that came after, they came now not uh, negating what came before them, but saying not and uh, nullifying what came before them, but adding to it and making it more relevant for the current time. So I think, you know, I hope this goes a long way to explain, uh, you know, this point, uh, because it's very important in terms of, uh, you know, the relationship uh, between the Quran uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the, and the Old Testament and New Testament. By the way, may I just mention Again, those who are the viewers here, and, and this is, you can go, there's not, we're just saying these things just to, to you know, to, to, to make each other feel good or to sort of bend our ideas uh, to accommodate each other, to make each other feel good. No, you know, the, this is exactly the Islamic principle on the issue to such an extent that in terms of the, the previous books, you know, in the Quran, you ask any Muslim, if any of you are viewers, you ask any Muslim who knows the fundamental things about their faith, they will tell you without a shadow of doubt, any Muslim you meet in your workplace, ask him, do you believe in Moses and Jesus? Peace be upon them and all the prophets. They say, of course. Do you, books, do you believe in the books that were revealed to them? They say, of course. We, we cannot be a Muslim. 
if we do not accept the books that were given to the prophets that came before them or, and the revelations that came before them. So this is part and parcel of the faith and belief of Muslims. We do not deny it. We do not negate it. What the Muslim position is, is that uh, they, they were relevant and given laws for their time. You know, and, and, and that is how from the time of Adam, peace be upon him, and Noah, peace be upon him, and Abraham, peace be upon him. You know, time, with time, with the generations and with the centuries and, and hundreds of years uh, passing by, society was evolving. And God Almighty, in his wisdom and in his plan, he planned all. God, you know, God is not like me and you human beings. We have afterthoughts. You know, sometimes as human beings, uh, we have a plan. We all sit and brainstorm and have workshops and have think tanks and call the experts and we plan something. But with all that, you know, once it's a five year plan, but two years into the plan, we say, oh, oh something has changed. You know, some other thing has happened and now maybe we're going to change our original plan to meet the new changes. This is human being because we are limited. Uh, we don't know what's in the future. We can just estimate or guesstimate. But God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God Almighty, well, He is God. He knows the, the beginning and the end. He knows the past, the present, and the future. He doesn't have afterthoughts. He didn't just suddenly decide, oh, I think uh, the, the laws of Moses is not enough. Uh, I'm going to send, uh, as a second thought, I will send Jesus, peace be upon him, just because now this is getting old or this is getting redundant. No. In fact, we did a uh, program, and this is not my thinking. This is in the Quran. In the Quran, in chapter 3, verse 81, there is a whole verse called the covenant of the prophets. We discussed this also in previous episodes, as I say. It's the whole verse, the covenant of the prophets. Chapter 3, verse 81, wherein God Almighty is telling us and recall that when they were still all, the, all of us were in the soul. You remember? The, the, we were all in the soul form before we came into our mother's wombs before we were created as human beings into this world. But our soul was in the soul world with God, Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So likewise was the soul of all the prophets before they came into the world. And God Almighty tells us in chapter 3 verse 81, there, is a, there was a conference of the prophets. God Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the, the soul of all the prophets, 124,000 tradition says, and he tells them, you know, and recall when God had a conference of all the prophets long before they came into the world. And he says, I'm going to appoint you to be prophets when I send you into the world. From the time of Adam, right to the time of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It's there in that verse. And after all of you, from Adam and Noah and everyone to, and Moses and Jesus and the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you're all going to help one another and you are all going to do my mission to, uh, to bring humanity towards me. So God's plan was already, already done long even before the prophets were sent physically into the world. And this is the Muslim position about all the prophets. That's why we accept them as the, from Adam to the first and all of them in between to the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, the last messenger sent to humanity with the last uh, book of guidance and the last testament for humanity for the guidance to bring everyone, unite everyone again and show them back the way to God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Stay tuned, we'll be back for the last segment. <laughs> Welcome back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To the last segment of uh, Building Bridges uh, Between the Faiths with myself, Rafiq Hassan, and our IT, uh, ITV team here, and you, our avid and growing viewers out there. Uh, our, for those in this segment, we did say we're going to get your comments and your questions. Uh, and we will continue this uh, episode, we did say, about the response to our pastor and other questions that you have, uh, because that's a quite a lengthy discussion and very relevant between uh, especially uh, the, the Judaic Christian and Muslim views on some of these issues. And here's our details for those who take your pens out and those who want to send us uh, your comments, you know, our details are on the screen there now at the back. You can either write to us uh, to the physical address, to our box number that you see on your screen, in a box 60386 Phoenix 4080, or you can email us to, on info at ifri.com, 
Or you can, uh, you know, SMS us on 031-829-2652. That's an SMS line, but it is also a phone you can call in uh, with your comments. And can we also, as you know, there's free information uh, that has been given for those who are interested uh, in wanting to know more about, uh, uh, you know, uh, Islam. So that is what uh, this program is all about. It is to, to uh, increase the interaction. And there's the opportunity that you have uh, in this part of the program uh, where you know, we would send, I think we will later on flag the details for you uh, if you cannot see too clearly now, uh, but we will uh, flag it for you later. But let's just proceed because it's the last segment. Uh, remember, while before we go into it, let us re-emphasize that again, our pro for, uh, you know outlook to everything in building bridges between the faiths is we are all the children of Adam, the tree of humanity, no matter what religion we are, what color we are, what nationality, and is in terms of the Abrahamic uh, branch of the tree of humanity, Jews, Muslims, and Christians are the Abrahamic family. Now let's go to some of your questions and answers that uh, have been coming through. And as I said, you know, uh, this is what keeps the, uh, this a two-way process. Uh, well, perhaps, you know, uh, later on down the line, we could, we did have it. I remember last Ramadan, in, in about two months' time, uh, the Muslim world will be going into month of Ramadan. And if you, the viewers, if you recall, uh, you know, compliments again of uh, ITV management, they, they instituted a live program in the month of Ramadan. But we'll see how it's going to go for these building bridges where, where people could phone in on the program live, you know, and have these questions and comments and discussion. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, for now, oh, it is all in writing. Now, here's, uh, here's a beautiful question that came in as well from uh, one of our viewers. What is the Muslim concept of life and death? Now, I think that's a very nice question. You know, what is the Muslim concept of life and death? What I will uh, say to you in answering this, uh, because I have a nice video clip uh, wherein uh, our world famous uh, boxer Muhammad Ali, you know, gave a good answer to this. And we have a nice little video clip on this, uh, what he, how he answered it. But I thought, uh, you know, it's important for me just to say a few things and then uh, you will watch the clip, uh, you know, uh, and then we will end up after the clip. Now, the, very simply, very, uh, the, the Muslim concept of life and death is that we remember earlier on in this program, uh, we did say that uh, uh, we, did, we did mention uh, that uh, uh, we were in the stage of soul, we were with God in the soul state, and then when he decided, he put us into the wombs of our mothers at a certain point of gestation, right? Uh, and then there after that, we were born into the world, and now we are existing. In, but then we have a limited time span on earth, and then what will happen? We will die, right? When God determines, he wills, we will, we will, we will all die. And in Islam, that is not the end of life. The body just goes back you know, and remains behind, but the soul lives on and the soul journeys on to the afterlife and we return back to our creator where he will, uh, for accountability and he will judge us according to the deeds that we did. So in Islam, uh, we, we believe very strongly in the life after that, which is the Judeo christian belief as well. So in Islam, death is not the end of everything. Uh, people may get away with things here, but uh, that is why there is the day of judgment. That is why there is life after death, uh, because then there will be absolute justice. Nobody can escape the judgment uh, and, and the justice of God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So yes, I think let's go, to, uh, let, me, let me give you again uh, the, the, the screen, if you can take the details, and then we will show you that video clip. Uh, you know, we'll actually end with that video clip uh, because it's, it's, it's very interesting how Muhammad Ali himself, as the boxer, answered. Because somebody, uh, what they actually did is they asked Muhammad Ali, a youngster, uh, and that was many years ago, asked Muhammad Ali, uh, what would you do when you retire? What are you playing? And he was only 30 years old at that stage, Muhammad Ali. We, now we're talking about 30, 40 years ago. And you'll enjoy uh, the answer that he gave because as a Muslim, Afro-American Muslim, uh, he answered it very beautifully. And I thought we will do that as well. So yeah, take our details and uh, we will meet you next week again, uh, you know, for the next episode. We will carry on with the discussion uh, uh, that the pastor, our pastor from Johannesburg sent us the uh, you know uh, uh, beautiful letter uh, raising issues. So while we end up 
you know, take the details again, keep the communication going. So till we meet again, you know, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Na tera khuda koi aur hai Na mera khuda koi aur hai Na tera khuda koi aur hai Na mera khuda koi aur hai Ye jo raaste hai juda juda Ye maamla कोई और है